guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren, thank you so much for being here. I hope you're doing great. Today, I thought we'd do something a little bit more chill and really I just wanna talk about products that I don't buy anymore and when I say products, I mean mostly like categories of products. I think one of the biggest things that's helped me over the years to not buy literally all the makeup, like every new release, even the things that like didn't make sense and, and basically like control my makeup monster, if you will, <laughs> that just wants to buy everything, is knowing my preferences and learning what I like, what I don't like. And if I can have those things pretty secure and have a foundation of knowing like what I like, what is Lauren like, does this release actually fit me? And if I can have those moments and time to think about it, I can stop myself from buying a lot of purchases that are basically going to end up not getting used, not being appreciated, and just are wastes all around. So I thought I would share with you the types of products that I've learned now that I no longer buy. And of course, this list is preferences. So you might love a category on here. And if you know that you're like opposite than me in those categories or in what you like, I think that's amazing because then hopefully you can be making the best makeup purchases for yourself. I'm really big on hoping that all of us out there can buy the makeup that we want to and that we actually want to deep down that actually will hopefully be something we enjoy, get use out of every day, and is the reason, you know, like the good parts of makeup and why we like to, to be here in the community. So, so anyway, long intro. These are my categories that I no longer buy and the reasons why I no longer buy them. Let's start with eyeshadows because why the F not? You know, we love eyeshadow here. I love eyeshadow. It's my, I think it's still my favorite thing. I mean, I truly am a makeup lover all around. I love so many things, but eyeshadows are the thing that I could always use another one. I could always try one more, right? But when it comes to mostly matte eyeshadow palettes, really any eyeshadow palette that skews more matte than shimmer, I really should be taking a step back at, and looking at that palette and really dissecting that palette to see if it's something for me. In the kind of makeup phase that I've been in, probably in the last year or even two years, I really love shimmers. I love all types of shimmers, satins, metallics. Well, maybe not metallics as much actually, more like like satins or um, like quite toppery, almost sheer type shades. Those are my favorite. I love holographic, super sparkly, like I love shimmer and I am no stranger to an all shimmer look. So I don't even need mattes to construct an eye look. And I've really learned that over the years. I mean, don't get me wrong, a nice all matte look can be so classic and very beautiful. It's not that I don't love them at all. It's just when I think of what I'm reaching for all the time, the likelihood of like an all matte palette or a mostly matte palette making it into like my top used products is pretty slim, you know? And so knowing that about myself, it can help me eliminate something new that's on the market and is maybe selling me a fantasy that I don't actually want. <laughs> you know what I mean? So definitely mattes. I feel like there are a few exceptions when it comes to mattes and that is if they're colorful. So really like all neutral matte shades. That's not what I'm into. I don't even use like a matte cream shade anymore. I used to use a matte cream shade to set my lid before I went in with color on the lid. I don't do that anymore even. So I mean, I just, I'm telling you. <laughs> They're out the window for me, but I will make some exceptions to like bright colors, deep, colorful colors, pastels, like anything like that that's a little bit more interesting or different or a bit more unique, that might catch my eye and make more sense for me. But when it comes to just like neutrals, I really should steer clear. I don't need that. Going along with eyeshadows, this is more a category again of eyeshadow and I really have steered away completely from large palettes. I am not into them at all anymore. I remember um, back in the day, I mean, the more the better. You had a hundred eyeshadow, palette that is better than a palette with 80 shadows like that was how I thought of makeup I think a lot of us thought that way because that was what was new and different um, but for me now as I've gotten older as I've learned what my preferences are I definitely am preferring smaller palettes smaller color stories I'm talking quads quints six pans I really if we're talking about like larger eyeshadow palettes I don't really want anything over like 10, 12 is like max, like that is a big palette to me, like that's what I consider a big palette, whereas before I would have considered a 12 pan palette like normal. Oh, that's a normal one, not a mini palette, you know? As I'm talking here, I guess the exception are the midi palettes from Natasha Denona. Those are ones that I can get down with because I love that the shadow pans in there are quite small. And there might be exceptions here or there for the roll, but really when I'm thinking of this list, it's really something to help 
help me when I'm, I'm looking at the new makeup and maybe getting caught up in the frenzy. You know, my heart's racing, I'm a little excited. What are some things that can help ground me into remembering what I want and not just what they're selling me, not what the marketing is selling me. So definitely not as into large palettes. I mean, like any of those big Morphe palettes, I'm just not even like those, I mean, those don't even get anything going. They're just like, I, I don't even see them. I'm just like, what? Okay, whatever. Like, <laughs> I, I'm not interested in them at all. And definitely before or back in the day, I'm telling you, if it was a new eyeshadow palette, like I was gonna get it. I was gonna get it. There wasn't a ton of thought going into if I should get it or if I shouldn't get it. Does this fit me? It was just new, exciting, and I wanted it. Yeah, I definitely don't, <laughs> don't do that anymore. And I'm not into the large eyeshadow palettes. I wanna also kind of mention here, and I think it ties in with this idea of like bigger equaling better, these larger palettes um, delivering more value. But especially right now, I don't think that I am attracted to these kind of value sets because I find that I actually don't get the value that's supposedly there. So, okay, what, let me describe value sets because I'm sure it's confusing. <laughs> I'm talking about products that maybe offer a two-in-one type thing or even like the Morphe palettes, you're getting tons of shadows in there, but for $35, I think it is. So like price-wise, there's so much value there. Like if you were to divide out the price per eyeshadow, it's so cheap. Or even ones that have like eyeshadows and face palettes and maybe even add in like a lip gloss in the pans with it or yeah eyes and lips and face all in the one palette like I'm just not interested in that everyone's makeup collections different you might be into that but I've learned that I would rather take the $35 and go buy something that isn't considered value which is just hard for me I'm someone who loves a sale I love a deal I still like shopping things on a discount for sure but I try not to get trapped into the idea of value in how much you're getting in a an, in a product and instead again refocus recalibrate into what item I actually would enjoy and maybe that's the more expensive eyeshadow quad you know which sometimes it's hard for my brain to wrap itself around because I'm like but you could get 35 eyeshadows for $25 why would you spend double it on a quad like what are you doing I have to like reteach myself that if I use that quad all the time that is way more value for me that is the actual valuable thing not the other one that I bought have don't ever use and it sits in a drawer. So like retraining my brain in that way, that kind of ties in anyway. Okay, next, I'll keep going. <laughs> next on my list, we're kind of jumping around now in no particular order. Okay, body oils and any type of body glow product. I talk about this a lot in my new beauty launches type videos that the fantasy hot, the fantasy is what I want. I wanna be on the yacht, I wanna be on the beach, I wanna be in the bathing suit, I wanna be there, I wanna be on vacation. Um, but the body oil will not get me there. No matter how much the photos tell me that, no matter how much I see beautiful people wearing it, I'm never gonna freaking put it on. I don't, I barely use body lotion. You think my ass is gonna be putting on glow oil? It's not, okay? Yes, the packaging is so beautiful. Specifically, I'm thinking of the Summer Fridays glow oil. Like, beautiful. That is the epitome of selling me this fantasy, but like, I just don't need it. I have like a Sol de Janeiro one that I've had for forever. I think I've used it once and I used it on Halloween. So definitely a category that I know for me is so tempting. I want to be that person. I want that life, but buying the product does not give you that life. It does not get you on that vacation, does not get you like, do you know? That is a category I just try, I have to just like, nope. Nope, oh yeah, it's hot. We can recognize that and still leave it alone. Next on my list, I have some lip stuff. So first, twist up lip pencils off my list. I just am not gonna spend the money on a lip liner that is a twist up because the formula of those all tend to be quite similar where they're a little bit more creamy and I prefer a drier formula in a pencil. Basically things like MAC, Jane Iredell, those are like my two favorite ones at the moment, but I think Laura Mercier has like really nice pencils like that. I don't like lip liners. That 
that are essentially these like long wear formulas where you put them on and then they dry down and they don't move around because I've learned that for me, a really opaque lip is not what I'm looking for. I want to be able to control the product. And so when it's a little bit drier, a little bit more firm and it's in that pencil, I just feel like I have more control over application of how it's going on, the opacity, and I can build it up if I want that, like if I'm desiring that at the moment. But for every day, it's pretty easy for me to get something low key and what my desired look is. So I pretty much steer clear completely of anything in a twist up. And that has been a really great realization. I'm like not wasting my money trying all these lip pencils that aren't gonna be something I like. With that lip scrubs, I have also basically completely taken off my list. I just don't need them. Um, I don't need lip scrubs in my life. They were something that was really tempting and I would buy actually quite a bit of them. Like I just, I don't know. Or if I got them in PR or what, I would just keep them and hoard them. And like, I don't know what it was about the lip scrubs that really got me, but I never use lip scrubs. I think that it's really tedious. And I'm, I've said this before. And honestly, I've probably done a video like this before. So maybe some of these are the same, but I felt inspired. So that's what, <laughs> that's what we're filming today. But I'll just take my finger and rub my lips. I'll take a, you know, a towel, rub my lips down before before I go in with a lip product. Like I'm just no fuss that is like what I will end up doing. So I don't need to have like 10 different lip scrubs I'm never gonna use, no. And definitely not buying like high-end ones. I'd rather buy lip balms, I actually use those. All right, next on my list, I put highlighter palettes and this kind of ties into that idea of value, right? Like there's something about, well like, oh, I'll spend $35 on a highlighter palette because I get so many highlighters in there and I've just changed my mindset. I would spend the 35 on a really amazing highlighter that I was excited to have in a single compact. I think the chances of buying a highlighter palette where the majority, if not all of those highlighters are going to be something that truly works for you is quite rare. Now, if you're a pro makeup artist, you do makeup on other people, that's obviously different, but usually out of a line, at least for me, I find one to two highlighters work well, um, and that's kind of it. So a duo of highlighters is not a palette to me. I'm talking like three or more. It's a waste, it's a waste. You're gonna have one of those products that's kind of just sitting around. I just think it would be a very rare occasion that a highlighter palette nowadays would be tempting enough for me to buy because usually they end up being kind of a range of colors and so inevitably no matter who buys it it's most likely not gonna work well or a hundred percent for everyone so I've kind of relegated that I'm okay buying the singles I also have been way more into this you know the idea of these little trinkets and treasures in my collection and it is more fun kind of buying them one by one I don't know I, I like the idea of not having just like the masses and instead hand picking having that one piece in a nice little compact the one highlighter that works for you being decisive finding the one not buying three out of the line you know what I mean so um, yeah that's definitely something that doesn't tempt me anymore it would be interesting to see the only thing I'm, I'm like Danessa Myricks has a highlighter palette but I think that's what's kept me away from it is because <laughs> I don't want the whole palette okay anyway next this next one is like a skincare item but I have learned that I'm not really an oil person in general so body oils face oils I'm just not there maybe in a couple of years I'll be there like I I have been stepping up my skincare routine and game if you will I I'm trying, but I'm already oily, so I just feel like my skin doesn't need that drink of moisture that an oil is for people. I just find that it tends to make me more oily. I don't particularly love the feeling on my hands, on my face, like I don't love that. I'd way rather use like a super heavy cream over an oil. So I've had to stop myself many times when some of my favorite brands come out with face oils because I find myself attracted to different brands and I wanna buy like quite a few of their products and I. I'm interested in following their launches as stuff comes out. But I have had to stop myself from buying those oils because I know realistically they're probably not gonna get the use. On to primers. Primers and really how I like my base makeup has changed so radically in the last four years. I've talked about this. This is nothing necessarily super new, but it's something that I have to keep in mind because it is a big habit change of what I'm buying. But really anything that says like mattifying primer, I'm out. <laughs> I'm good. I just don't don't want something mattifying. Keywords that 
I'm interested in are like illuminating, luminizing, <laughs> is that even a word? Glowy, radiant, even like a demi skin-like finish, something like that I would be more interested in. Now, not all those products work for me because like I said, I do have oily skin. I have to be careful sometimes, but I do like the moisture. I don't like things locking down, setting in place. I, I don't like that whole bulletproof look for me. I'm more low maintenance, like I do my makeup and then I'm low maintenance throughout the day. So I just find things that are glowy and don't have those like lockdown periods wear off better throughout the day. And that is something that I'm very interested in. So I don't really go for anything matte. I also don't go for anything really pore filling. I've just, I don't know. Um, I don't really care, I guess. I maybe don't have the biggest problem with pores or texture, so I'm lucky there, but uh, I used to use quite a bit of like pore filling around here and even on my nose. And really, I try to like not put as much product here as possible because my nose is just like a hazard zone for any product. Like it's a difficult area, especially like around the, like really the corners of my nostrils have always been a problem area. I've been battling some perioral dermatitis, which is actually getting so much better. So I try to just like keep those pretty limited. And I find sometimes with those mattifying products or even the pore filling, that thickness can cause products to lay weird. Like it just doesn't, it doesn't work for what I'm going for anymore. I don't like the look of that or really the feel of that on my skin. You guys probably already know this one, but face powders, I'm just not on the lookout. And that I used to go through like a pressed face powder a month at least, if not like two. I use so much a freaking powder. I would use like a flat kabuki brush from e.l.f. and I would dip it in there and I would like pat it on, like setting, setting, setting this face, okay? And I loved it then. I just don't do that now. I could use probably a little bit more powder if I'm being completely honest, because when I was on vacation, I was in a more humid climate and I felt like mm, maybe powder would be nice here. So I don't think it, you know, is never called for. Sometimes under the lights, I get a little shiny, but I just feel like it's definitely not something that I'm continuously buying. I'm not looking out for brands to come out with new ones. It takes me for ever to like use up anything that I have in my collection. So yeah, face powders like basically non-existent in my life. <laughs> Ooh, another one I used to love, liquid eyeshadows. I was obsessed with liquid eyeshadows because they were so pretty. And I'm specifically talking about like the really flaky, duochrome like fun type of liquid eyeshadows that were really popular after Stila came out with their glitter shadows. And so I wanted to try every brand. I wanna try all of them. And now I don't do that, but I think it's because I found such beautiful indie shadows. I don't need the liquid. And I find that the indie shadows, the powder for me is more easy to manipulate into how I want it to go on my eyes. So I, I've really left the liquid eyeshadows on top of the fact that they dry out. So because they're a liquid, they're gonna go bad faster anyway, but I've found that so many of mine dried out within like about two years and powder shadows I think just hold their life so much longer so I've kind of like given up my love for liquid eyeshadows I still have more guys we're still here I hope you're still here with me I know this one's like we're just chilling and chatting and talking so yeah I hope you don't mind I keep hearing like noises but Sam's not home so I'm just like <laughs> scared all right, anyway, let's finish this up. We have a few more to go through. I think it's like five more. <laughs> Next, contouring products in general. And I'm talking about like the contouring powders and creams really, and also the highlighting portion of that that usually comes alongside. I just use bronzer. Like bronzer to me is enough to give some color to my face. I can do some defining. I'm not doing like chiseling, but I really like a softer look anyway. So I'm not interested in having that stripe and really sitting there and, and carving carving out my bone structure and all of that. It can look amazing, it can look really great, but it also takes a lot of skill and I just don't feel like it's for me every single day. I still have like the mini Kevin Aquan, you know, contouring powder and I'll probably keep that in case, you know, just to have, but it's definitely not something that I reach for on the everyday. I just, I love a little glowy bronzer, get out the door, move on, you know, I, I'm not sitting here contouring. And on top of that, I'm not sitting here like extra highlighting under my eyes, highlighting under my contour that I have going on. It's just, it's just not what I need. I love 
the look of like the most minimal product almost as possible. I think that looks so fresh and beautiful. And I feel like as I get older, you know, you have a little bit more wrinkles here and there. And I do find that you could do whatever you want and it can look great. But for my preferences, I think for every day, something a little bit more minimal, I do find myself feeling more confident and beautiful. And then I can like amp it up on the specific places and nights and times I want to. Two more lip things that I really don't care about and I've learned over the years that mm, the idea sounds good but no and those are lip oils and lip stains. Lip oils to me sound like they're gonna be so amazing and I will say every brand does a lip oil different. <laughs> Every brand does a lip oil different. So sometimes you get a lip oil and it's this thin oily thing. Like it is thin and gross. And those are really the ones I'm talking about where I'm like, nah, I'm out. I don't want that. I don't like it. You, I think it's the oil guys. I think I don't like the oil, but I don't want that on my lips. The lip oils that end up actually being more of like a non-sticky gloss. I can get down with where they almost feel like a balm those I can get down with but I've just had so many in the past that I, I didn't really like and I find even the colors of these lip oils they tend to be like a pink a bright red another red a orangey red pink like they like the colors look so similar I don't think that I would really spend my money on them no. And then what goes along with that is a lip stain. I can understand the use and the practicality of a lip stain where you're really gonna have that color on your lips for a long time, but I don't necessarily want that. I told you, like, I don't need the longevity portion. I can reapply if I want to, but I like something that kind of wears off nicely, and I don't love a really bright, punchy lip that's also kind of transparent like that as much. Or if I do, I'll just get that with a gloss and it can wear away. I also find that lip stains tend to kind of like all go hot pink or red on me or, or maybe orange like those are the three colors you get and I don't really want those most of the time so I don't need to be buying a bunch of lip stains and I also don't like products that then also like one of the big factors or things they are like we're awesome because we also stain your lips I'm like that's a red flag like I'm running the other <laughs> way there are these bite lipsticks that were like that and oh I just don't like that look on me I don't really like that look on me I stay away last two things I have nail polish on here not exactly makeup but definitely to me in the beauty realm and something I used to buy a ton of and I don't buy I don't buy it anymore because you tell me the last time you've seen me with some painted nails Definitely not this year, not this year, 2021. So <laughs> you tell me why I would spend money on it, but I'm not gonna lie, my brain has seen a few different nail polish collections recently and I have been tempted. I have been tempted and this is when I'm glad I have this kind of list in my mind and I've been better, you know, about realizing what actually works for me because, you know, again, I want to be the girl who paints her nails. I want to have those nice looking nails. I love the photos. I love the fantasy. I love color. Like, I think one of the reasons I love eyeshadow so much is I just love color. I love color when it comes to my house and like doing design stuff here. I love just coloring books. I just have always in my life loved color and nail polishes are literal paint bottles. Like, um, hi, I love that, but I don't actually use them. And so they become a waste of my money. <laughs> For me, if I have to sit there and it becomes a chore to use it, it's probably not something that I should really be buying, right? So nail polish, I've had to cut out of my life as much as my brain <laughs> still tells me I should buy some nail polish. And then last on here, I, I put on here bad slash ugly packaging. Now that's kind of vague and kind of mean. What I mean by this is one, I have been more into nice packaging. So I guess uh, something being in nicer packaging is something that's a, a positive or a pro. Whereas if something was in more basic packaging, maybe that would be a con or a reason for me to consider if I should buy this. And I think that's a good thing, I guess, because I know I wouldn't buy like everything just because of packaging. It needs all the other things. So that's something, but also just bad packaging and taking into account how the packaging is gonna work before I buy this item, kind of working out some of those kinks you might find only once you start using it before 
I'd buy it. A thing that I didn't do this with and I wish I had, I guess, <laughs> it's not a good example for this video, but it is a good example as in you will get what I mean. Kaja has those little blush stampy things and I, the packaging to me sucks. It's bulky, it's big. I actually don't like the stamp. I don't think it's cute. I think it's bulky and useless and I, I actually, it makes me have negative feelings about the product. And so now that I know this, I am definitely gonna be more aware of those types of products in the future, just based off packaging. Even if it says it's a glowy serum blush and it's in a color that I would like and it's from a brand I really enjoy and all the other things seem to be in line, the packaging being what I would consider bad is gonna be something that I'm looking at. It will be the thing that stops me from buying it. And I think just finding all those different <laughs> I guess requirements you might have for the makeup you're gonna be bringing in I think can be really helpful if you're trying to limit your buying if you're trying to really curate a collection that you feel like is you and um, you know I just know that it's a struggle it's taken me a lot of time to get where I am today and I'm not always perfect at it I also have a channel which is like its own kind of complicated thing in the mix but I thought I would share some of my nose with you guys because I was inspired to do it and also because this is gonna kind of be part one or like I'm basically gonna have a second type of video that's going off of this topic talking about how I shop for sale makeup and what I said no to and also share what I did buy so that'll be coming yeah anyway I hope you guys enjoyed just hanging out talking um, I'd love to know what are some of your no categories that you've learned over the years you don't actually use every time you buy it it ends up sitting in the drawer yeah I'd love to know we're all so different so it's always interesting to me what someone else might like or not like so thank you for being here I I hope you're having a great day and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.